Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine McCoy and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thank you for clicking in to drop by, but if you're a returner, it is always nice to have you back. And I am coming to you from Chicago. Ah, that is very different because usually I am coming to you from Ohio, where I live, where I have been living for the past two years on my gap year before medical school. And I am here because, as the title says, I am starting my pre-matriculation program, which there are some times where I'm okay, and then other times where I just, whoo, it's happening, it's happening! Because medical school is no longer just some far away thing that high school me dreamed of, or that pre-med me dreamed of, I'm about to actually start the thing that I've been working for for the last 10 plus years. So <laughs> I'm excited. Everything's going to turn out great. Everything's going to be okay. And one of those things that makes this experience great is being at this pre-matriculation program. But before we get too far into the video, if you are not yet subscribed, that's okay. It's an easy fix. Let me help you out. You just use the subscription button in the bottom right hand corner. It's nice, big, red. Click that, turn on notifications, and that way it'll help you to know when other awesome videos like this one are coming out in the future. The last time I talked about Chicago was when I was here for my second look, which was actually my first time seeing the medical school campus. So if you have not yet gone and watched that video, it's okay. Here is the thumbnail and I'm also going to put the link to that video in the description. But without further ado, let's get into these first few days of my experience for the pre-matriculation program. And I've said that word a couple of times. What is pre-matriculation? Well, it is a program that happens before matriculation. Who is it for? It is for people who are underrepresented in medicine. And that just means that if you were to go to a doctor's office, you probably wouldn't see a doctor who looked like me. So that is going to include racial and ethnic minorities. It's going to include women, people who are immigrants, not from the United States, or people who are from rural parts of the United States. Those are the people that they heavily invited and encouraged to apply for this program. So what is the purpose of it? What am I here to do? I am here essentially to get a head start on different resources that are available to me as a student at Feinberg School of Medicine. I am also here to learn and just explore and meet my new community that I'm going to be a part of. And that community includes other medical students like myself, it includes the staff, it includes faculty, residents, interns, physicians, attendings, I will be able to meet all of them in this pre-matriculation program that is happening in the four weeks before medical school. The program started off this Wednesday with us coming in to the Office of Diversity and Inclusion where we had to present our passports and that was just to do a little bit of identity verification. We also got a t-shirt. Now, I like t-shirts. It means I did the thing or I'm about to do the thing. So here we have it. Nice, simple gray t-shirt. And it says Office of Diversity and Inclusion, Northwestern Medicine, Feinberg School of Medicine. After scanning our passports, we took a short walk over to an auditorium where they had a breakfast set up for us. And that was a time for the members of the pre-matriculation program. There are 16 of us and I would also like to note that seven of those 16 members are the only black women in my entire medical school class. So all of the black women out of the 150-ish of us that will be attending medical school applied for this program and got in. And that's really nice because I was able to meet all of them and they are awesome. The brunch was also attended by members of the diversity and inclusion department as well as our associate dean of diversity and inclusion. They also gave us our folders. Now the folder says educate, discover, and improve health. And I'm not quite sure where in the city of Chicago this is 
featuring, but it's somewhere in Chicago. Eventually, at the end of four years, I will be able to tell you where this is. On the back of our folder, it has a campus map because I don't know where anything is. And this was definitely helpful when they say, meet in the Cyril Auditorium, meet in the Hughes Auditorium. I am able now to at least find the building of where I'm going to. And inside is where we had all of the information about our schedule, where it is that we're supposed to go to. I also had my personal um, places that I am going to be doing my clinical shadowing. So they have each of us doing three days of clinical shadowing. We've all been matched up with a different attending. And I am going to be doing mine with internal medicine, hematology and oncology, and rheumatology. Those are the specialties that I am going to be getting a taste of, which I have not been able to before. I have been able to do dermatology, emergency medicine, pediatrics, um, as well as retina. So, I mean, retina is the one that I've had the most experience with because I've worked there literally for two years. But I am excited to be able to have that new experience and open myself up to something that I previously have not thought of before. And the best part of the folder came in a thin envelope. Sometimes thin envelopes have checks in them. It did not have a check, but it did have something that was essentially money. And all of us were going crazy over this because who doesn't love money? So these Let Us Entertain You cards, they are essentially gift cards. Let Us Entertain You is a coalition of restaurants here in Chicago where if you go into one of these 15 different restaurants, you will be able to use this $10 gift card as a way to pay for your food. So they gave us three of the five of these, and I've already used two, so I've got three left. But they gave them to us, everyone is cheering because who doesn't love free food? And it was time for us to go to lunch. I made the suggestion of going to get tacos. We went to Tall Boy Tacos, it was excellent. And here's a little bit of video of us enjoying our lunch. Like, 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 after that we went back to the auditorium and that was when the m2s who were with us for this week the entire week they gave us all of the resources that we will ever need essentially for our medical school education they were split up into three different providers so some of them were provided by feinberg some of them were provided by previous medical students and others were provided by third-party resources but they were essentially these gigantic google folders upon google folders upon google folders filled with information filled with links videos paragraphs filled with all the information that we will need to learn what we got to do for medical school. And then they also helped us set up Anki, which essentially is a flashcard studying tool. And we were given Anki remotes. So I was very confused about why we needed remotes since, I mean, couldn't you just use your mouse? But the Anki remote is going to be useful because you don't want to click your space bar 43,000 times to advance to the next flashcard. So that is essentially, as they explained, what an Anki remote is for. That way you're not running down those specific keys on your keyboard. And they did give us all the flashcards. It is 
43,000 flashcards, but it's crazy to think that at the end of four years, I will be able to know those 43,000 flashcards. There's one thing I almost forgot to mention. We are at the end of day number one, things are winding down, and the M2s mentioned that there isn't a lot of student-made videos out there about Feinberg, but that there's one guy in their class who made a video about pre-matriculation last year. So they bring it up, we are watching it on the big screen in the auditorium, we're seeing him talk about what we are currently going through. And I bring up the fact that I have a YouTube channel and I made a video for Second Look. So they say, the M2s, they go, oh my God, let's watch that. They pull it up. I am now seeing my YouTube channel on the projector screen and everyone is going, oh my gosh, Jasmine, you have so many subscribers. They see that there is an ad played before the video and they go, you, you, you're, you're getting ad revenue. Someone is paying you. I do get a small check from YouTube every month. I'm very proud of that. And just seeing the support that these people I do not know that I met literally less than 10 hours before, that was something that was very heartwarming and I was very happy to share that experience with them. Some of them even subscribed, so an extra hello and thank you to you. And here's a little bit of video from those reactions from my fellow students. Subscribe. Subscribe, mom. <laughs> On day number two, we started off meeting in the Hughes Auditorium, which is one of the same rooms that we were in for Second Look. And what we were doing is we were presenting different presentations that we had made on whatever topic we had picked for ourselves. So my presentation was on DNA replication and repair. We had to keep it under three minutes or as close to three minutes as possible. And we were answering these specific learning guiding questions. And it was really fun, especially the fact that it was so quick. You weren't obviously expected to get all of the information in or go super, super deep, but it is surface level quick facts that make it very useful. And these are representative of the problem-based learning, the PBLs that we will actually be doing in the semester once school really starts. Being able to have that practice, I feel, was very beneficial and something that will give us a little bit of an edge when we get into the real thing. We look the same, we'll be all right. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the second half of our day was filled with different speakers from all over. So first we had Dr. Javier Guevara, and he is a doctor working at the Feinberg School of Medicine. And he came and talked about his experience as a Northwestern medical student, talking about how you shouldn't have too much pride. You should be able to ask for help when you need it. And doing so is the best thing that you can do for your future self. So here's a little bit of video from his talk with us. Pride makes us really, it's our worst enemy and it was my worst enemy. So when I didn't reach out, I was failing. When I was able to reach out and accept help, that's when I thrive. So I, I always, always recommend everybody is going to struggle at some point, especially going the route of medicine really maybe one in the whole entire class will say everything is fine and like no problem and that's fine like so so jealous and envious but that's probably not the norm the norm probably is that everybody struggles at some point and the earlier you're able to reach out for help the easier just like in medicine you guys are going to learn any baby problem we can treat better than when we let it be a full-blown issue up next, we have Dr. Akwosa, and he came to speak about imposter syndrome. I've already done a video about imposter syndrome on my channel, 
the video link is going to be in the description but his presentation was amazing being able to see someone in such a high place talk about the imposter syndrome that he experienced lets you know that you are not alone and one of the important questions that he was asking us to ask ourselves is are you successful because of what i've already experienced with imposter syndrome i said yeah i'm successful but not everyone has that same belief some people did not raise their hands and when he asked them to explain why they would say because i'm still working on becoming successful because it is a progress it is a journey not a destination things like that so one of the other great things from his presentation was this quote quote from uh president roosevelt and i'll put it there you can pause but that was something that he brought up that i think is really going to stay with me in the rest of my education during medical school and our final speaker of the day was Dr. Yancey talking about the future of medicine. So his presentation was about health disparities and just the vastness of their depth and breadth here in the United States, how much they cost the United States in excess dollars, how much they cost the United States in excess debts, and how if we are going to make progress, it is going to require people, it's going to require physicians like ourselves, who are not going to stand by and just accept this as status quo. And at the end of this day, we decided to do something that was spontaneous. So we decided, oh, we're ending early. Why don't we go do something? Why don't we go to happy hour? I do not drink, but I'm trying to be social. I want to get out there with my new classmates. And we decide to go back to Tallboy Tacos because they had a three to six o'clock happy hour. They had $5 margaritas and $5 nachitos. So pequeños nachos, small nachos. And that's what I had. Other people were having the margaritas. We were just laughing, getting to know one, one another, kikiing. It was awesome. And it's something that I think we're going to institute for the rest of our Thursdays. So I'm very excited about that. And here's a little bit of video from our fun at happy hour. And finally, for day number three, we started off in the Searle Auditorium. I might be saying it wrong, but that's okay. They told us that this is the same room we'll have our ethics classes in, which when you think about medical school, you typically think about the hard sciences of math, physics, biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, but it does include things that are not necessarily hard science, like ethics. You have to talk about that when you are someone who is holding a high amount of authority and a high amount of guidance in someone's medical journey. So you have to be making sure you're making ethical decisions or at least ask yourself how you would walk through ethical decision making. They also, apparently, as they told us, were going to be having uh, business classes. Never did I think that I would be taking a business class in medical school, but we're gonna be doing that. So we're in the Searle Auditorium, we're doing more PBLs. My, P my PBL, remember, that's the three to five minute presentation that we do. I did mine today on genomic imprinting, and that was something that I didn't know about. So yesterday when I was doing DNA replication and repair, I knew 70% of what I was doing. But today was all new stuff. And it's like, ooh, I'm already learning. I'm not so, so I think one summer, my cousin put me on. I just binged it all summer. And in high school, we had laptops. So I'm just like, <laughs> so I was, instead of paying attention to class, I'd just be watching the episode. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I just caught up in like a summer. So right now, I'm really I'm really hard. Yeah. So what I would say though, let's say I do like 1,068 episodes. We ended the day by doing some practice SAS questions, and SAS stands for something. The M2s couldn't remember what it stood for either, but it essentially is a weekly review and question session that happens every Monday where you will go over the material of last week just to check and see how well you're doing on your studying, retaining, and application of the information. So we did a couple of those and then we ended with a Q&A with those M2s because they're going to be leaving. We will be getting a different set of M2s next week that are going to be teaching us about Foundations 2 material. So that was it. Those were the first three days of the pre-matriculation program before I start medical school at Feinberg School of Medicine. Whew. It's okay, it's good, it's happening. It was a lot, but it definitely made me feel better in knowing that it is something that is manageable. It is something that I will get through and it is something that I will be able to have a good time during. It's not just a grand struggle to get through the four years of medical school. There will be good parts to it. And I will make good memories, good friends, and just set myself up for an amazing future. So thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.